The news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa held a telephone call with the Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al Sisi on the occasion of winning the presidential elections. His Majesty congratulated al Sisi and wished him success in carrying out his presidential duties to achieve the people's aspirations of further progress and prosperity and to continue Egypt's strategic and leading role in the region in support of Arab and Islamic causes. His Majesty affirmed that Bahrain will continue to support Egypt and its people at all times. He also expressed aspiration to further bolster the deep rooted historic relations between the two fraternal countries and their people in all fields. His Royal Highness uh, Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Glebia Palace a number of royal family members and senior state officials as well as the sons of the late Sheikh Isa bin Khalifa bin Salman bin Isa bin Ali Al Khalifa led by Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa who expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness's sincere condolences on the demise of the late Sheikh Isa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. They wished His Royal Highness abundant health and the people further progress and prosperity. The Prime Minister recalled with appreciation the virtues of the deceased and the good relations he had with the late Sheikh Isa bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, he prayed to Allah Almighty to rest his soul in eternal peace. His Rohan is noted the contributions of the people of Bahrain to their country in all fields, expressing pride in their efforts. He also noted the importance of strengthening social relations in the community. For their part, the sons of the late Sheikh expressed pride in the relations between His Rohan as the Premier and their father. They also expressed thanks to the Premier for his continuous follow up on their father's medical status.
His Royalness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa viewed a number of developmental projects for which His Royalness directed to implement in Muharraq and check their progress. His Royalness commended the field visit with the West Muharraq waterfront project Saada directing to complete the first stage of the project in one year and to speed up the construction of the project's parking lot. He stressed the necessity for speeding up the issuance of construction permits. His Royalness was also briefed on the project and its implementation process by the Deputy Prime Minister and President of the Ministry Committee for Urbanization and Infrastructure Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa and the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Engineer Assam bin Abdullah Khalif. His Royalness affirmed the necessity for the speedy implementation of the project to provide entertainment spaces and facilities for Muharraq citizens. The Prime Minister noted the importance of the project's commercial tourism, which will tremendously develop the entertainment and commercial services systems in Muharraq. His Royalness asserted that the government is keen on implementing further services and urbanization projects in the kingdom's cities and villages to accommodate the needs of their residents. His Royalness noted that Muharraq witnesses the implementation of development, developmental projects, stressing the importance of providing facilitation for all projects that serve sustainable development in various areas of the kingdom. He added that the people of the kingdom are its development foundations. Upon His Royalness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa's field visit to the Muharraq Central Market Project, His Royalness ordered to open the market to the public before the final quarter of the year. The Prime Minister directed the concerned authorities to study the allocation of the space opposite of the market for public car parks in addition to the parks in the market project. His Royalness urged citizens to benefit from the job opportunities that will be available in the project, which is built on an area of 28,000 square meters and three floors and more than four times the size of the old Central Market and will include a large shopping mall and 
shops with an area of 3,000 square meters, along with 106 stores for the three markets, which will provide meat, fish and vegetables. His Royal was briefed on the preparations and progress of the project, which will provide comprehensive modern shopping centers that cater to the needs of visitors. He also directed the Ministry of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning to follow up on the progress of the project and ensure that it is completed as scheduled. The Prime Minister expressed pride in the efforts of citizens in the completion of projects and investment in the services field, which reflects the active contribution of the private sector in the government's developmental projects. His Royal affirmed the government's keenness to make the project a modern and diverse market that serves as citizens, noting the importance of central markets and their impact in enhancing the commercial movement in the kingdom. His Rohan has praised the role of the private sector in small and medium-sized enterprises in supporting the kingdom's development march in various fields, stressing the importance of community partnership in strengthening the national economy. The Prime Minister noted that the government provides all service facilities in various areas of the kingdom for the benefit of the people. The Representative Council held its weekly meeting today, chaired by its Speaker Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, where it approved a draft law amending Article 56 of the traffic law issued under Law 23 for 2014. The Council also approved a draft law amending Article 11 of Decree by Law 7 of 1989 on practicing medicine and dentistry. The Council approved a proposal to add a new paragraph to Article 27 of Law 23 of 2014 to issue the traffic law. A proposal on amending a number of provisions of the Salary and Retirement Bonus Regulation Law for the Bahrain Defense Force and Public security officers and individuals has also been approved. The council also approved a proposal on amending Article 36 of the Municipalities Law issued under Decree by Law 35 for 2001. The council approved a proposal regarding the government's stress on tightening measures of granting visas to some visitors. The council also approved a proposal regarding the establishment of a cybersecurity center in the kingdom to protect against electronic attacks. In the presence of the Chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, top health officials inaugurated the Choose Your Doctor project at Ali Health Center this morning. This pilot initiative has been implemented for the Ali catchment area with a vision of spreading it to other health centers around the kingdom in the near future. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah expressed thanks and appreciation to the Minister of Health, Faiqa bin Saeed Al Saleh, and all ministry affiliates for their efforts in setting plans and applying systems and policies according to the goals of the National Health Plan 2016 2025. 
2025. He stated that this project is a first step in the implementation of public service provider autonomy, which is a major pillar for the implementation of the National Social Health Insurance Program, Sahati. Health officials lauded the initiative and the advantages it will bring about, as it will solidify ties between physicians and patients through the application of a family medicine approach with a focus on counseling and prevention catered to the whole family. The Supreme Council of Health has been tasked with drafting the set policies for the implementation of the National Social Health Insurance Program in Bahrain. This program aims to secure high-quality, sustainable, competitive and accountable health care for all citizens and residents. Actually, I think it's very important, uh, you know, experiments we had to, uh, as a pioneer actually in this uh, center. And uh, we are actually uh, applying the family physician program. And the family physician program, the essence of it actually is that the doctor is actually responsible about the patient, not only when he is sick, but actually uh, to, you know, keep him, keep him healthy. And that's, I think, the most important thing. In addition to the treatment program, we have screening program. And the doctor actually, you know, calling a patient, you know, uh, to uh, uh, screen them according to the guidance uh, they have actually according to the age. Well, today's event is, is really, it's a, an event of happiness. It is a joy for us. And it is reflected by our leadership in the government. Um, and the, the second pillar will be uh, the, the, the residents here and, and Ali and even the workers in the health center. They join together with even at the Supreme Council of Health. They join together mainly to provide the best service that could be provided. Well, mainly the, 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 the slogan which was used or the, the main objective was to, it is like the optional or you could choose your doctor. It's not only just by the word of choosing the doctors, but it will, it will lead us as, as a Ministry of Health in, in setting the strategies of how could we improve our services mainly for the residents here in Ali. Actually, as you know, that uh, we have launched the social health insurance program about uh, one year ago, and we are currently working with the parliament to pass the law uh, as such. But uh, in parallel, we have uh, started to issue what we call the National Social Health Insurance Card. The principle of it is allowing the patient to choose his own doctor that he thinks or prefer to be treating him and his family. So that is the essence of it. And hopefully, uh, this is a pilot that we have started with the uh, Ali Health Center. And slowly, we are uh, moving on to from one health center to another. The project of uh, Choose Your Doctor is uh, meant to be to uh, increase the quality of care that should be given to the patients. And that was the main aim for this project. Uh, it goes under the umbrella of the uh, uh, social insurance uh, program, uh, but the main part for it is the quality. Uh, today we are going to distribute the cards uh, that is uh, promoting uh, the uh, project of uh, Choose Your Doctor. Uh, and to give the patients information about this project, to let them know uh, that it is very important for them to register under their uh, a doctor in this health center. The Vice President and Prime Minister of the United Arab Emirates and ruler of Dubai, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, received the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, in the presence of the Crown Prince of Dubai and Chairman of the Dubai Executive Council, Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, on the sidelines of the 17th edition of the Arab Media Forum. His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid welcomed Sheikh Khalid and requested him to convey his sincere greetings to His Majesty, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Minister of Foreign Affairs conveyed the greetings of His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid and their wishes of continued health and wellness. The Minister expressed Bahrain's pride in the deep rooted brotherly relations with the UAE at various levels, praising the UAE's support for the kingdom and its efforts to promote security and peace in the region. The Office of the First Deputy Prime Minister, the OFDPM, has announced the end of the registration period for the fourth edition of the FDPM Fellowship. Based on the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and in line with the principles of Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, this unique program aims to further develop the public sector by investing in training of Bahrain's national caters within the government. Speaking on the occasion, the OFDPM Director General, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, praised Bahrain's youth for their outstanding 
outstanding contribution to the kingdom's progress in line with His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision for comprehensive development. He added that Bahraini's cadres are the main engine of the economy and a core component of government strategies led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. He noted that the FDPM Fellowship, which receives enthusiastic support from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and is now in its fourth year, has witnessed a high number of registration. Sheikh Salman also added that due to the success of the previous three editions of the fellowship, the FDPM office has strengthened the program's role in line with the government's development goals. He praised the skills and competencies of the previous fellows and expressed hope that the fourth intake will continue the success of the previous three years. The Bahrain Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, Dirasat, launched a new book entitled Qatari Invasion of Adabel in 1986. In the presence of an intellectual research and media elite and a number of the center's members and researchers, Dirasat Board of Trustees Chairman Dr. Sheikh Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa welcomed the guests and expressed pleasure that the launch ceremony is held here in Bahrain, recalling Bahrain's sacrifices and its martyrs. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah added that the book is a historical document and a testimony that the details of the events of the armed Qatari invasion of Adabel in a flagrant and painful attack on the sovereignty of a neighboring and peaceful country and disregarding the ties between the two people, which contradicts Arab morals, human values, and international norms. He also added that the Qatari involvement in Bahraini affairs has continued in many ways and means through attacks on sovereignty, attempts to influence the national fabric in support of terrorist groups with proven evidence. The Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, affirms its internal success with comprehensive reforms and qualitative gains and its international presence. The kingdom has established its advanced position among free nations with stable, wise stances, continuous achievements and great initiatives. He also affirmed that in the prosperous era of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Bahrain has enjoyed freedom and openness which reflected on the development of research and academic activity. Sheikh Abdullah stressed that Dirasant will not fail to fulfill its mission which is to promote regional dialogue and stability and express pride that the center comes within the best five research centers and studies in the Arab region in 2017 according to a high level academic ranking. The Center for Strategic International and Energy Studies, uh, Dirasat, uh, have launched its uh, new book titled uh, The Qatari Invasion of Al-Dibel in 1986. This is a historical event uh, whereby uh, a military invasion and aggression uh, by Qatar over uh, territorial uh, and sovereign uh, islands over Bahrain, uh, namely Adibel, which was approved by the uh, military committee of the GCC uh, to have an alert uh, system east of Bahrain, uh, funded by the GCC and approved by all six uh, GCC uh, members. A few weeks down the line after um, appointing a Dutch uh, company uh, and the dredging has started, uh, out of the blue Qatar invaded uh, Al Dibel with four military helicopters. It uh, arrested and kidnapped uh, the workers uh, working in the, uh, in the Dibel. Um, they were Dutch, they were British, they were Thai, they were Filipinos, uh, and they were um, uh, present in, in, in Doha for some time. Uh, Bahrain chose to, uh, to abide by uh, principles of good neighborliness and, and try to resolve the matter in peaceful means. Um, and so it happened, Bahrain, through the mediation of Saudi Arabia, have uh, agreed to remove al Dibel and to remove uh, Jarada, which is a, a neighboring smaller island, um, just because uh, Qatar has put a precondition to withdraw from al Dibel only if Bahrain would uh, remove al Dibel and would remove uh, Jarada. These are just some glimpse from um, the archiving of this historical event, but it was very necessary for us at the Bahrain Center for Strategic Studies to uh, document and archive such a very important event. And a number of questions have been risen uh, right after the launch. What was the motive behind the Qatari 
a military invasion of Adiba. Was there a hidden Qatari Iranian uh, alliance back then? And does history repeat itself today? And how did this military aggression uh, affect the uh, drawing of the maritime boundaries between Bahrain and Qatar on a later stage? Upon the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Ainsa Al Khalifa and the appointment of the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs and Chairman of the Board of Trustees of the Royal Charity Organization, the RCO, His Honor Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Secretary General of the RCO, Dr. Mustafa Sayed, participated in the second conference to announce the donations to support humanitarian aid to Yemen. The conference was organized by the United Nations at its headquarters in Geneva with the participation of the governments of Switzerland and Sweden. Dr. Sayed announced that the Kingdom will establish a heart center in Yemen under the directives of His Majesty the King and the leadership of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. The center is part of Bahrain's international aid campaign to Yemen. Dr. Sayed praised the support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. He added that the, some of the Bahraini initiatives included sending 1,000 tons of humanitarian aid to the people of Yemen, as well as continuously cooperating with King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center of Saudi Arabia and the UAE's Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan Foundation. On the occasion, the chairman of the permanent mission of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations, Ambassador Dr. Yusuf Abdul Karim Bouchiri, praised the directives of His Majesty the King and the charity work of the RCO led by His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. As part of the cultural exchange programs between the two friendly countries, the U.S. Embassy invited the American band Mary McBride here in Bahrain to take part in the Spring of Culture Festival. More on this report with Hiba Abdel Ghaffar. Building bridges of cultural communication between Bahrain and the United States, the American band Mary McBride is here in Bahrain to take part in the Spring of Culture's wide variety of events, programs and activities that show the kingdom's rich art, culture and history, and moreover, introduce American music to Bahraini people to help them learn more about the American culture. Music is such an important uh, cultural um, vehicle, really, to bring cultures together. Uh, we find that music is beloved across uh, cultures, across nations, across peoples, and certainly the Bahraini people and the American people both have a love of music. So the band really represents the opportunity to bring together uh, our two countries, our two peoples, through a love of music. <laughs> The band is conducting wonderful performances and a series of musical workshops in schools and universities. It's also meeting many Bahraini artists and organizing musical collaborations. We're going to try and do some collaborations um, while we're here and we'll see how it goes. I mean, there, there are some incredibly complicated, sophisticated music here. Um, so I'm just taking it all in and really enjoying hearing about it and we'll see how the collaborations go and we hope we'll um, come up with something that we'll do live. It's long, long been on my list of places that I wanted to go, not just to play music, um, but also just to go around and see the country. And so we're very happy to be playing the Spring of Culture Festival, especially because it's such an amazing event. And we feel like we're in great company with so many wonderful international artists. And we're also able to do some outreach shows. We played this morning at the Mobility Center. So we were able to play for a lot of young people who are living with disabilities. So it's a range of shows that we're able to do here and we're having a great time. <laughs> The band is impressed with the local music and the warmth of Bahrain and its people. Nothing can truly cross borders between hearts and peoples, such as art. You don't need to translate it. It's simple, it's clear, it's direct, and it's rich. So culture is like the treasure of the mind for cultural exchange. Art is like the mine for cultural exchange. It's a great initiative by the U.S. Embassy and Bahrain to prop up cross-cultural understanding and exchange, strengthen melodic dialogue and collaboration to establish a sustainable bond between Bahraini and American people. Since art speaks all languages, the cultural exchange program between Bahrain and the United States continues to strengthen the bond between the two friendly countries. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul -Afur.